Hello, dear audience. Welcome to Newsfest Addis, your daily source of news bites locally, regionally, and internationally. With today's news analysis, I am Miron Gitacho. Stay with us. Climate Conference of Parties 27, a deal rich in overtime. The Climate Conference of Parties 27 was the most chaotic climate summit in 30 years. But on November 20, after days of intense negotiation in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt, countries agreed to establish a funding mechanism to compensate vulnerable nations for loss and damage for climate-induced disaster. The deal could be the most significant development on climate since the Paris Climate Agreement. After the key of asking, poor nations will see rich nations pay for damage and economic loss caused by climate change. However, the argument for now is just on the existence of an emergency bank account for climate disaster with the balance of zero dollars. The battle now will be on who will pay into it and who will be able to take money out. Moreover, the attempts to addressing the biggest source of the planet's warming emission ended in a fiasco after several nations blocked a key proposal to phase out all fossil fuels. In today's news analysis, we will take a look at this historic deal and its short coming and addressing the real issue of the climate crisis. The deal, the United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP27, closes the breakthrough agreement to provide loss and damage, funding for vulnerable countries hit hard by climate disaster. For 30 years, all parties, all the priorities and focus of the discussion has been on reducing emission to less the severity of climate change in the future. This has been a big problem for poor countries because of the lack of resources to reshape their energy system. Additionally, for these countries, climate change is not the problem for the future. It's already here causing havoc. Developed countries have have been uneasy about writing a blank check for climate impacts for almost as long as the United Nations has discussed climate change. But the Conference of Parties 27, they have argued to make payments for the specific need to be worked out. This argument on a fund for climate impact is kind of rebalancing for priorities and focus, even a rebalancing of power over who gets what. The final deal announced Sunday morning in Egypt retreats the gold seats in 2015 Paris Climate Agreement to keep global warming from rising more than 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to the pre-industrial era of the 80,000s. Simon Cecil, UN Climate Change Executive Secretary, said this outcome moves us forward. We have determined a way forward on a decade-long conversation on finding of loss and damage, deliberating over how we address the impacts on communities who lives and livelihoods have been ruined by the very worst impact of climate change. The striking aspect of this deal was for the first time, small poor countries left a climate summit, feeling cautiously optimistic and rich countries like the UK, EU and U.S. left feeling quite dejected. While the argument was generally viewed as positive steps, it seems like there was little progress being made on the other important topics. Critical issues like the phase out of fossil fuels and need to keep global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius seem to be put on the back burner. Progress on establishing the loss and damage fund came at the expense of progress and dealing with the very cause of the climate crisis, emission reduction and moving away from fossil fuels. A new deal did not include emission reduction, a clear commitment to phase out all fossil fuels, or set a clear flow through agenda on the phase down of coal. On the contrary, at least a dozen new gas deals have been struck on the sidelines of the summit. The disagreements, deep seated tensions flared between wealthy nations that have benefited from burning fossil fuels and poor nations that are suffering the most from climate related disaster. The 20 richest countries produced about 80% of the world's emission, while poor nations that contribute relatively little to the crisis are the ones suffering the most because of it. African leaders have been calling out Western countries for hypocrisy and failure to take responsibility in tackling climate change. Nigeria's president, Mohamed Buhari, said in an article published in the Washington Post, don't tell Africans they cannot use their own resource. If Africa were to use all its known reserve of natural gas, the cleanest transitional fossil fuel, it should of global emission would rise from a mere 3% to 3.5%. Somalia's Deputy Prime Minister Salah Ahmed Jamal also sees inequity and the sudden eagerness of wealthy nations to preserve the global goal of limiting warming by doling out grants and loans to carbon-intensive poor countries. The New Deal will make countries like Indonesia, 
the world's largest coal exporter, better suited to attract tension of billion and leverage private captain than Somalia. His concerns were confirmed when a deal was made to pay $20 billion to Indonesia to transition away from coal on the sideline of COP27. Less aid seems to be available to countries like his own. He said even though they are on the front lines of climate change and did almost nothing to create the problem. In an interview, Jamal added the question is for a country that emits 0.0 something percent of greenhouse gas emission globally for a continent Africa that contributes only 4 percent of emission and which 600 million people have no access to electricity and hundreds of millions live in poverty. Should there not be a specific for arrangements? Additionally, these arguments arose about whether all developing nations should be eligible for aid or only the most vulnerable ones such as small island nations in African countries. According to the UN, China and India, two of the largest greenhouse gas emitters are classified as developing nations. Moreover, as talks progressed, stark false lines also emerged over which countries should be for the damage in which country would be eligible to receive them. The newly established fund does not specify which nation will be obliged to make contribution, but it does refer to expanding the source of funding. The argument is also unclear regarding a specific deadline by which the funds must be collected. Billions of dollars in previous pledged climate funding have not been implemented by many wealthy nations, including the US. The summit, which was originally scheduled to end on the 8th of November, went into a two-day overtime with negotiators hammering out the details. The parties were finally able to agree on the most challenging subject on the agenda, even though the phase out of all fossil fuels was chilled. Ultimately, the success of the U.S. UN Climate Summit rests on its ability to get money flowing from wealthy countries to those most in need at the peace and skill required to match the climate crisis. This was our news analysis for the day. Thank you for being with us. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.